So hopefully we're back. Anyway, um, good morning. Today's topic is you are the key to your purpose. What if, what if that were the case? So we'll get to explore how our very quirkiness is what may be the, the biggest key to what we came here to be and do. So until we get started, let's just take a couple minutes to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lung, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and vigorously rub those hands together, feel the friction, the temperature, the tension, all that energy, the tickling and the tingling, the, and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form <clears throat> that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, um, Today, we're going to talk about how it's often our quirks, our weirdness, the things that we're maybe made fun of for when we're kids that might offer us a key to who we came here to be. Uh, we, it's, it's interesting to me to see how many people compensate for for their idiosyncrasies and um, try to separate themselves from those things that make them stand out or make them different right we mm -hmm. kind of are taught to figure out how to blend in and um when those very things that make us different and maybe sometimes the object of ridicule could be the very things that make us able to, to contribute the very specialness we each came here to contribute. So an example is uh, when I was growing up, Within about 10 minutes of meeting me, people would either tell me I was too intense or crazy. And um, now, now I use that intensity, that insight, that perspective that was too, too much in social context to um, support people in their personal growth and transformation. So by becoming more of who we are, we have the greater capacity to serve what we came here to serve, what we came here to do. And, um, you know, we try to keep ourselves in line in, in so many ways for social approval. And uh, I'm wondering what it might look like for you if you could embrace the things that make you different you know so another awesome before i continue i just want to say if you're wanting to be part of this conversation and i'm not responding if you're writing comments and i'm not responding it's because i don't see them so um if you go to the enlightened world network facebook page you can leave your comments there i had a little bit of a a glitch getting started this morning. So I'm hoping that everything's all wired up properly. But uh, if you put your comments 
in the Enlightened World Network Facebook page. I will respond to them if I see them. So um, I hope to see some comments. Anyway, um, when here's another example, and it's a very cool one. Um, I I recently had a conversation with someone who had telekinetic abilities as a child, like they could move sugar cubes just by thinking about it, for example. And I was just totally fascinated by this because I am fascinated by other dimensions of awareness and access to our broader capabilities. You know, things like uh, spontaneous healing and precognitive events and all of that fascinates me partly because it's unusual but also very much because it's an indicator of a connection to another dimension of information and um, what I see is that we are we are going to need to um, be tapping into every level of resource and information available to us in order to come up with ways to address our our current uh, circumstances in the world to find true true ways of effectively addressing our our situation globally, environmentally, uh, socially, all of that. So um, I am excited by, by indicators that some people have access to these other dimensions of awareness. And what was amazing about the telekinetic power is not even so much that it was about moving things, you know, moving sugar cubes. I don't know how useful that is necessarily, but but that it indicated that there was access to another dimension of energy, of being able to move energy. And it, as it turns out, this person's a facilitator, which is so awesome, right? Because what are they doing? They're moving hearts and minds. They're moving hearts and minds and shifting the energy in a room to, to create greater alignment, greater awareness, greater perspectives. And so the, the um, telekinesis was something that this person had kind of put out of their mind, that they, they made it very... Um, very secondary, if even secondary, you know, that it, it sort of faded away back into the, into the um, shadows. And instead, I'm wondering, what if we look at our gifts? You know, what if we look at our quirks and the, the things that we might have been even made fun of um, for? And look at those things to find clues for our purpose, for what we came here to be and do. Uh, so rather than trying to make ourselves more like everybody else, what if we become more ourselves? Because my, my premise is that um, who we are ultimately is life happening through us, life expressing itself through us and through the unique vehicle that we came here with. Ah, welcome, Jenny. So good to see a comment. I'm so glad you showed up this morning. It's great to be here with you. The topic is maybe you are the key to your purpose. So, um, meaning, that maybe the things that make you very much you 
are the talents and skills that are part of your unique expression here on the planet and and what you are what you came here to be and do and so i was just talking about um, the intensity that I have had throughout my life for which I was criticized is now the source of my ability to be supporting other people in their growth and transformation. And I was talking about another person that I spoke with who had, as a child, had telekinetic abilities to move things uh, with their mind. and they had sort of relegated that memory into the background. But what is relevant about that is that they were connecting to another level of energy, another dimension, or a certain level of mastery around the energy that is not particularly common. And as it turns out, that person is a masterful, masterful facilitator. And so how cool is that, that um, this ability from their childhood is now being expressed in the world in ways to be able to move hearts and minds and elevate awareness. So, you know, another thing that I was, um, uh, I don't know, I was told I was too sensitive as a kid, you know, that I, that I was, um, well, that I was too emotional, too sensitive, too sensitive. So Jenny says, I'm searching for my purpose that is of service. Well, so Jenny, what I can say is that this was something that I searched for for years and years and years and then as I started recognizing the things that I was really interested in the things that excited me the things that were um, that some people felt were my weaknesses and I could look at them instead to find strength in them um, like the sensitivity you know being empathic uh, to to be starting to recognize those things that looked like weaknesses. Good morning, good morning, Bernadette. Welcome. So good to have you here with us this morning. We're talking about how you are are. What if you are the key to your purpose? Um. So having looking at what people perceive to be your weaknesses. We've taught to try to compensate for all these things that actually make us different from others and, and try to normalize ourselves in big quotes, um, that those things are often the gifts that we came here that are ours to uniquely share. So if you're super sensitive, Yes, that can be a cause of a lot of pain if we don't know how best to manage that sensitivity, but that sensitivity may be a key to our ability to, to help transform the world. Um, so the, the bottom line here is what if our, what we've been taught are our curses? In other words, we've been taught that these things are our weaknesses. What if instead those things are our strengths? So Jenny said, a few days ago, the thought came across my mind to help others with energy work. Well, that's that's a really, really interesting thing, Jenny. So um, I, I think that that's something worth looking into because my sense of you is that you're very deeply sensitive and tuned in and and there may be all kinds of possibility for you to go down that that avenue for personal healing and for also supporting yeah. others in their healing. Like one of the things that I've noticed is that people who go into healing are people who've needed healing, myself being one of them. 
you know, that people who go into psychology or people who are trying to understand um, very uh, challenging psychological environments, you know, and, and then utilize their experience to support and assist others in their transformation as, as we each transform and grow and evolve ourselves. So um, I, I think that there is important merit to recognizing who we are and embracing that, taking an ownership of that and finding it as a resource rather than a deficit. And Jenny says, I looked into a local school on energy healing. That's very cool, Jenny. There are some really great schools out there. You might look into the Barbara Brennan School of Healing. That's pretty an, an interesting organization. There are all kinds of really, really good um, energy technologies out there. Bernadette says, we're all our own purpose that is to share love, a compassionate ear and a voice without judgment, to share love and allow people to be heard. Well, Bernadette, I would say that 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 might actually be the purpose for some people more than others. Some people are more tuned in to the ability to love and share love, to be loved. Um, some people are really great with numbers. Some people are really great with music. Some people are really great with uh, inventing things or um, creating things or doing art or um, music or um, thinking, philosophers. You know, people have different skills and abilities and different passions. So the thing is not just to be following what you're good at because there have been things that I was good at that I just didn't enjoy, uh, but something that you're good at that lifts you up. For, so Jenny says, I'm learning who I am. That's beautiful, Jenny. And, and that's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful thing to be doing. Um, to be learning who we are, because as we learn at least how we express, as we get tuned into these things that make us unique, those things are clues to who we came here to be. So um, Jenny says, awake. Some are more conscious and awake than others. Well, and we're all on a journey. You know, we're all on that journey of presence and awakening. And it may not look that way for everybody either. But um, at least I contend that we're all on that journey. It may or may not be true. Um, I kind of think that that's what life is about, is, is uh, living itself and expanding itself. So Bernadette says, if we don't try anything new to see what we truly enjoy, we'll forever be looking. It's like doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. That's the definition of insanity, right? Is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. So yeah, trying new things and, and getting to know what our preferences are, what our what are the things that light you up? If, um, if you folks are interested, you could go to my website and I'm just gonna put the link in here. Let's see. Um, see if I can give you the link to the little booklet that I wrote. It's called, uh, your Inner Success Blueprint, Five Keys to Discovering What You Were Born to Do. So I'm just going to see if I can put this in here. Check that out. There you go. I think it went into the chat. I hope it did. It looks like it did. Um, Jenny says, I want to connect my soul 
with my soul and heal the broken parts in me and help others. Jenny, that was so much my own motivation too. It's just, I really did feel broken for so much of my life. And um, healing that brokenness, it's been, it's been quite a journey. And I can finally say I don't feel broken anymore, which is pretty amazing. And um, uh, so Jenny says, yes, yeah, she was able to download the blueprint the if if you uh check in the chat there's a link there that should help you to download it and um jenny says it's giving yourself permission to try something new yes um to not only try something new but to have new perspectives you know to to be to be willing to act with curiosity you know when when we're curious we can we discover new things and um we discover new things not only about the world but about ourselves and i just i have been working with a lot of people who are becoming more and more of who they are you know which means sort of letting go of all this extra stuff that's been laid over onto us in terms of trauma or negative beliefs or negative behaviors negative patterns all that stuff that just keeps piling on as we as we allow ourselves to release that as we heal those portions of ourselves we become more and more who we are in our essence in our core hence hence the title core connection and as we become more and more connected to that core and more expressive of it then we experience more and more fulfillment and more ease in becoming who we are rather than trying to force us to be something else that we believe that culture and society demands of us you know we have to wedge ourselves into these molds to fit the norm right um and it's interesting in marketing we talk about your unique value proposition the unique value proposition so what is it that you offer what distinguishes you from everybody else on the block and this is part of the discovery because we are all unique we're we're an individual co collection oh boy excuse me um, we're an individual collection of talents and traits and and uh, possibility. So uh, what does it look like as we become a fuller expression of of those unique talents? So what I what I say, is that in our evolution and our healing we become less of who we've known ourselves to be like less about our past less about our pain and and in order to become more of who we truly are in other words to be a clearer vehicle for the expression of life moving through us and um so you hold the key. That's the cool thing, is you hold the key. And Jenny says whole. Yes, becoming whole. And um, that's what this is about. And it's interesting. It's, it's like to become empty in order to have experienced the fullness of life. It sounds like a paradox, but it isn't really. Like as we become a clear and empty vessel then life flows through us in its richness 
and its purest expression. Bernadette says, sometimes we find something that ignites us that we would have never thought of initially that we may really like. Exactly, exactly. I always tell my grandchildren to try everything, even if you don't think you would like it, unless it's immoral, life-threatening, or illegal. I love it, Bernadette. What great advice from a sage grandma. That is awesome. Yes, try things. Try things so that you get to discover what you like and what you don't like. It's important to know what you don't like as well, you know, because that's that's as powerful an indicator as what you do like, right? So with that, I am going to wrap it up for this morning and just remember going into the next days and weeks and months that you are the key to your purpose. And uh, I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to check out all the awesome programming on Enlightened World Network, EWN, One with the Earth, and Enlightened World Living. And I am so grateful for our time together and for the unique expression of life that each of you are. Until next time, I, I hope to see you again here really soon. And in the meantime, lots and lots of love.